بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد So last week we finished the Durus al Muhammad Muhammadi Amit Al-Ummah Important lessons for every Muslim by Sheikh Ben Baz And the next book I'm not sure we're going to start yet the next book but just for benefit tonight we'll read from Shahu Bulugh al-Maram the explanation of Bulugh al-Maram Kitab al-Jami' the chapter on Islamic manners and adab and etiquette there's a book containing uh, about 1400 hadith connected to fiqh, fiqh issues was halal, was haram, was sunnah, was dislike. But the last chapter of Baluk Maram deals with edit. Edit. Manners, the Islamic character. In this hadith today, comes under the chapter of uh, a warning against some of the negative characteristics yani manners that's layam buggy that the Muslims should stay away from certain behaviors that the Muslims should stay away from it's a whole chapter on that then it's a chapter on uh, an encouragement of different manners that the Muslim should carry him or herself with so this chapter which is better to the heathen masawi al-akhlaq an encouragement to stay away from these different types of uh, behaviors or these different mannerisms. In this hadith, as it says here, Alamat al Munafiq, the sign of a hypocrite. How do we know a person is a hypocrite? The sign of a hypocrite. Firstly, to show the importance of this hadith or the importance of this. Uh, Subject hypocrisy because we throw the word around sometimes and we might not know the severity of it to call a person a hypocrite, how serious that is Islamically. So, knowing that uh, the Prophet said in the Sahih Bukhari, and I'll be loving Mesarud and the Radi Allah Anhu. عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال خير الناس قرني ثم الذين ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إلى آخر الحديث. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the best of the people are my generation. Meaning the Sahaba. As Imam Al Nawawi said, the Sahaba. And then he says صلى الله عليه وسلم then those that come after them after the Sahaba the Tabi'een. And then those that come after the Tabi'een, at Ba'a Tabi'een, those first three generations. Tayyip. That one hadith, along with the praise of the Sahaba in the Quran, the praise of the Sahaba in the Quran, along with the statement of the Prophet وسلم, praising them, the Sahaba, the companions in this hadith, brings more weight to the next statement coming after that. As that hadith, that's the clear text, that's no explanation. The best of the people are my generation, and then those that come after them, and then those that come after them, and then he finished the hadith about the one who, the people that will come, and their shahada will come before their swearing, and the whole issue with that. But the point of this, mentioning this, is the level and the status of the Sahaba. The level and the status of the Sahaba, that he said, they're the best of the people, and after them will come the tabi'in. And then those that come after them, those first three generations. Tayyip, knowing that they are the best of people. There's a statement in this hadith that we're talking about is on Alamat al Munafiq, the signs of a hypocrite. But there's a statement showing the seriousness and the severity that these people, that the Prophet وسلم, described as being the best of the nation, how they were, how serious they were about falling into hypocrisy how serious were the Sahaba about being hypocrites that they didn't want to be the people 
who showed up Yom Qiyamah and they were written down as being hypocrites and they were serious about that. How serious? And the, the point is, if this is the case with the Sahaba, if this is how they looked at hypocrisy, then we, huh, if we follow, huh, if we follow the Sahaba, we follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions and those who came after him and those, if we follow in that pure line back to our Messenger Alayhi Salaam, then this should be our mentality. Our mentality should match the mentality of the Sahaba. So, this narration is also recorded in uh, Sahih al-Bukhari. An Ibn Abi Mulayka قال أدركت ثلاثين من أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كلهم يخاف النفاق على النفس. This man said that he met the man said he met 30 of the companions 30 of the Sahaba of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he met 30 of them he said all of them all 30 that he met they feared that they fell into hypocrisy they feared for themselves of being written down as hypocrites and these are the people the people who felt like this that he met those 30 they were from the people who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said were khayr nas they're the best. The best of the Ummah feared falling into hypocrisy. And if the Sahaba feared falling into hypocrisy, then there's no way, there's no way that we could take it as something light. It's impossible if we're following the guidance of the Prophet Wasallam and that which he taught in his teachings, it's impossible that we look at hypocrisy to be something small, something light. It's impossible that we just walk around calling people hypocrites. طيب. This hadith on Abi Huraira رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم آية المنافق ثلاث. He said there are three signs that a person is a hypocrite. There's three signs of hypocrisy. He says firstly إذا حدث كذب when the person speaks, that he lies. وَإِذَا وَعَدَ أَخْلَفْ And if he makes a promise, then he breaks his promise that the person has trusted him with. In that hadith, he said, مُتَّفِقٌ عَلَيْهِ that, that wording, that wording is in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. He says, وَلَهُمَا And there's also another narration in hadith Abdullah bin Amr. إِذَا خَاصَّمَ Fajr. That if he argues, Fajrah. Fajrah. He used the word Fajrah. And we'll get into the details of the meaning of Fajrah. The person, when they argue, when they go to debate about something, how do they behave when they debate? The way a person behaves when they're arguing or when they're debating is a sign of either. Huh? It could be. It could be that the person is carrying a sign of hypocrisy, of the hypocrites with them, a characteristic of the hip a characteristic of the hypocrites. So, firstly, Ayatul Munafiq, the sign, the sign, the sign of hypocrisy, from the signs of hypocrisy, are these four and the other narrations or three or four things that he mentioned. So this explanation is by Shaykh Salih Fawzan, Hafidahullah. He says, firstly, the meaning of an nifaq hypocrisy, the meaning of Hypocrisy, huwa ibtan al I'm sorry, ibtan al sharr wa idhar al khayr. That a person internally, in the inside, they carry evil. But on the outside, they present it as khayr, as good. Huh? The inside is evil, what the people can't see. But what's apparent is that the person wants good. So, it is as if he says, كَأَنَّ munafiq أَخْفَ شَيْئًا وَأَظْهَرَ شَيْئًا خِدْعَةً As, he, as if the, the, the hypocrite is deceiving people. It's a deception, a form of deception, trickery. That they show one face, but on the inside, they really mean something else. طَيِّبْ Be dangerous. This is where it could be dangerous. What we call people hypocrites. If a person calls somebody, describes somebody as being a hypocrite. Because generally, 
generally is a hypocrite a Muslim is a hypocrite a believer I would say no I mean, it depends yeah. it depends no like huh is a hypocrite a believer somebody it on the inside huh Huh? And this is why they're going to. You only go by the action. You, you only go by the action. Right. Tell you. Only got, uh, two types of hypocrisy. Two types of hypocrisy. Right. Tell you. And with the action. Yeah. One with the belief, one with the action. Tell you. When a person says, methylene, like usually, somebody does something, they lied, or they say, he's supposed to be a Muslim and he did this, he's a hypocrite, you know. They see somebody doing a sin or something, right? It's a sin. They say that brother's a hypocrite. Or that sister's a hypocrite. What part of hypocrisy are they talking about? Because the hypocrites, as he said, they're two types. Some of them are not Muslims. Some of them are not Muslims. Which shows the seriousness of the, 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 the statement is weighty. And if you're saying a person is a hypocrite, number one, if they were a hypocrite, how would you know? How do we know what's in a person's heart? He might have some signs that look kind of funny. I don't know about that. Uh, right? But to come off and label somebody a hypocrite? When hypocrisy is something that is in the heart? The evil is in the heart. You don't know what's in somebody's heart. Unless they come out and tell you. Right? On the apparent, was thought here is that it's hey, they want They want good. But they could be holding in evil. How would we know by looking at a person that something is evil in their heart? Yeah, there's signs. But to come off and put that hook on that, that, that ruling on somebody that's hypocrite is something difficult. But yeah, the first type of hypocrisy, Nifaqun i'tiqadi. Wa huwa kufr akbar. Wa hadha nifaqun munafiqeen al ladhina adharu al islam wa abtanu al kufr. And this is the first type. Hip hip hypocrisy in the belief system and this is major kufr this is the major kufr that the person who has hypocrisy in their belief system they're not Muslims he says and these are the type of uh, hypocrites that what apparently they display Islam and on the inside they disbelieve huh? in their heart they really don't believe they really don't believe in their hearts. But on the outside, they display Islam. They might pray, they might fast, they might do a bunch of stuff. How would you, ever be, how would you be able to walk up to them and tell them you're a hypocrite, Right? You can't. You can't. You can't. Tayyip. And this is dangerous. It's dangerous. And this is the first type that a person doesn't believe in their heart. They don't believe in their heart but outwardly outwardly they may display the signs of al-islam and that person will be dealt with your mukiyama it's not really our place to walk around pointing fingers and labeling people hypocrites these people those are the ones that will be in the lowest part of the hellfire the lowest part of the hellfire and this is Hypocrisy in the belief. Why? What makes them worse than anybody else? What makes them worse than someone who, for example, said there is no creator? Right? Because the, the hypocrite may believe there is a creator. Right? He may believe in a rububiya, yes, because there's a creator who makes it rain, makes it cause life, right? He believes and might believe in all of that. But they'll be in a lower part of the hellfire than the one huh, who worshiped the idol. What makes them worse than them? The action. The deception. Huh? The deception. The deception. G. They're just saying one thing on another. Well, the guy straight out saying, I'm this. Mm. And living it. G. You know, so he's not trying to betray anybody or. J. Exactly. The deception. Not that they only disbelieve, like 
others that disbelieve. On top of them disbelieving like others, which they may be equal, they all disbelieve. On top of that, they have deception with them. On top of the, the disbelief, there's deception along with the disbelief. So he says, لِأَنَّهُمْ لَمْ يُسْلِمُوا وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِلَّا ظَاهِرًا فَقَدْ وَأَمَّا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَهُمْ كُفَّارٌ They never accepted Islam or believed except apparent. Maybe it was some type of benefit to it. Maybe it was some benefit. It could have been a benefit to them displaying themselves as Muslims. It's possible. But internally they really disbelieved. And he says, وَهُمْ شَرٌ مِنَ الْكُفَّارُ الْأَصْلِينَ That they are even worse than the other ones who may disbelieve in Allah Jalla Ala. They may be even worse. Why? Because, like we said, like he said, those others, maybe they worship whoever they worship. Or Isa, if they worship Jesus, if they worship the stone, the rock, whatever they worship in. عُرِفُوا وَأُخِذُوا الْحَضْرُ مِنْهُمْ That they're known, it's known that they disbelieve. And therefore the people, it's clear that, okay, they disbelieve, so the people are on, you know, are able to recognize. Recognize, and it's clear, okay, they disbelieve, they don't believe in Allah, Jalla Ala, and it's clear, and you know how to deal with them. All right? But these people, he says, These people, they deceive the people. They trick the people into think they're believers, and they're really not believers. So that the Muslims think that they're Muslims and they're not really Muslims. And this, he says, from Sharrul min al-Kufar. And this is why Walidalika call Allah Fil Munafiqeen Uhumul Adu Fahdarhum Qatalahum Allah Anna Yukfakun. That's why Allah said in Surah Munafiqun Humul Adu that the hypocrites are the enemies. They're enemies to Al Islam. Hypocrites, they're enemies, Fahdarhum, so beware of them. So beware of them. Qatanahum Allah. May Allah destroy them. And so to Munafiqun, the fourth ayah. And Allah says in another ayah, wa qala ta'ala, inna al-munafiqina fi dark al-asfal min al-nar. That indeed, verily, the, the hypocrites will be in the lowest, the lowest part of the hellfire. As the hellfire has levels. Different levels. Just as the paradise has darajat. The hellfire has darakat. The hellfire has levels as paradise has levels. Allah said that they will be in the lowest part of the hellfire due to their, along with the disbelief, their deceit and their deception. Allah said about them in Surah Al-Baqarah, يُخَادِعُونَ Allaha وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ Allah said they want to try to Deceive Allah and those who believe, but they only deceive themselves and they don't even know it. Deception. So on top of the disbelief is deception. Like this is the first type of nifaq. Hypocrisy in the person's belief system, where they outwardly display Islam, but internally they disbelieve. They don't really believe. The reason why they do that, that's not Allah Allah. It could be a lot of things. Maybe it could be a benefit. They could have been scared. Right? Sometimes brothers come home from jail. It's a lot of stories in the prison. <laughs> it's a lot of stories in the prison. But we only go on the vahya. We only go on the what's apparent. We go on what's apparent. Person takes shahada, they can treat them as a Muslim. If, if they're hypocrites, yomo kiyama, they'll get what they're deserving of. It's like the story when the Sahaba, when he killed the man who said, who took the shahada, who the who the hypocrites are say no he don't really believe he's not really a Muslim or she's not really a Muslim based on a sin because usually people say that based on a sin that a person did they did this so they're not really Muslim huh? that's a whole nother issue take fear <laughs> that's a whole nother issue now you you know we gotta be careful with the words we use so people struggle at different levels right you know you you know like I use an analogy like you may see somebody like drinking Mm. Drunk, but you don't realize that yes, he drank a half gallon. They don't drink a pint. Right. So is he trying to improve himself. Right. Yeah. So and like and like you said, it's mm. like it ain't our business. Right. Yeah. Now, we got does it drinking? Does if a person drinks, not that it's okay, not that it's okay, 
But bottom line, if a person drinks, does that mean they're not Muslim anymore? No. That's another issue. Right? Okay. That doesn't mean, all right, he's drinking, did it. It's a sin, no doubt. But sin, not all sins, not all sins remove a person from Islam. Not all sins. Some sins do. In the mu'min. Hypocrisy in a person's actions could come from, this comes from a believer. A person who believes in Allah, Jalla and the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a Muslim, and they have some hypocrisy in their actions. Al mu'minu yu'minu billah vahiran wa batinan. This person believes in Allah. A parent, and in his heart, or her heart, they believe in Allah, Jalla wa'ala. Walakin qad yattasifu bi sifatin min sifat al munafiqin. But it could be that he or she has a characteristic from the characteristics of the hypocrites. They believe, not like them, the first group. The first group, they don't believe at all. They look like Muslims, but really they don't believe. In their hearts, they don't believe. These people believe these actions that resemble the hypocrites. They're still Muslims, but they do actions. They, they're described as some and having some of the characteristics of the hypocrites. It doesn't take them outside of Islam. So does it harm them in any way? The fact that a person may have some characteristics of a hypocrite, is it any harm in that? Right? They're still Muslims. But how does it affect the person? The person that takes on the characteristic of the hypocrites, the believer, the Muslim, but they have some signs of hypocrisy with them. But the signs of hypocrisy don't totally remove them from Al-Islam. They're still Muslims, right? So the question is, how does that affect them? You with me? It doesn't remove them from the religion in totality. It affects his iman. It affects their faith. It weakens them. They become weaker. We're not going to say they're not Muslims. But when a person behaves like the hypocrites behave, it makes their faith weaker. They become weaker Muslims. Based on the things that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in this hadith. Based on the things that he mentioned in this hadith, when a person does this, we're not going to say they're not Muslims anymore because they did it. But what it's going to ultimately do is weaken them. They're going to become weaker. Weaker Muslims, weaker faith. The man gets weaker based on these things. And these are what they call nifaq al-amali. Hypocrisy in a person's actions. So he says, there are three, as it comes in the first narration, there are three. Al-ula, idha haddatha kadhab. Then when he speaks, or she speaks, that they lie. Lying, lying, as some people are habitually commanded, whatever Allah commanded us with, that it's obligatory. If Allah commanded us to be truthful, when we speak, then it's obligatory to be truthful when we speak. And if it's obligatory to be truthful when we speak, that means it's wajib. It's wajib to speak the truth. Meaning they will not lie. And if it's wajib, that means the person who does the action, who stays away from it, is rewarded. And the person who does it is deserving of Allah's punishment. If something is haram, the person who stays away from the haram, they get rewarded for staying away from the haram. But if they go to the haram, then they're deserving of Allah's punishment. So he says, for example, the one who lies, he lies on people. He goes around, he says this about this one, then they're lying. Right? This is fihi nifat. They have took on a characteristic of the hypocrites. And Allah threatened the hypocrites with the hellfire. As Allah said, in this case, the second sign, if he promises somebody something, that he don't fulfill it they don't fulfill their promises. And this is a sign of hypocrisy. Does that mean the person that promised to take you to the market tomorrow and they don't show up, we call him a hypocrite? You're not a real Muslim? You know it. <laughs> So you go hard and everything, you know, one extreme to the next. No, but it's a sign of hypocrisy. It's a sign that the person, if they continue on this, 
It weakens their iman. It weakens their deen. As for the believer, then the believer fulfills the the promise, their promise. وَلَا يُخْلِفُ وَعْدَهُ وَهُوَ يَقْدِرُ عَلَى الْوَفَاءِ That we shouldn't break promises as long as we're able. As long as we're able and able to do it and we promise somebody something, we should carry it out. If there's an emergency, something happens and you're really not able to do it, then that's a different situation. That's a different situation. As far as breaking promises and a person is able to do it, and I just told him that just to get him out of my face. I told her that because she just kept talking. He says, the إِنَّهُ إِذَا أَخْلَفَ الْوَعُودِ صَارَ مِنَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ If a person breaks their promise, then they've taken on this characteristic of the hypocrites. And if we think about that first statement, I'm Ibn Mulaika, or Abi Mulaika, that he said he met 30 of the Sahaba, 30 of the Sahaba that feared for themselves hypocrisy. 30 of them. طيب. And that was the mentality of the Sahaba. And then he gets into an issue that we won't go deep in. Wajib is uh, keeping your promise. Most, as there are a group of scholars who said that fulfilling the promise is obligatory, but most of the ulama have said that it is recommended, highly recommended, highly recommended. And we'll stop there for that on the ikhtilaf and that issue. Some have said it is obligatory based on this hadith. Others have said it is a highly recommended action. Tayyip, the third sign of hypocrisy. He said, إِذَا أُتِّمَنَا أُتِّمُنَا خَانْ The secret. And this one is, uh, it may be more common. Sometimes people do. You give somebody something, I'll be back. In you know a month or so, I just get it when I come back. Just keep it. You come back in a month, they don't have it. You trusted them with something, and they break the trust. They don't hold their trust. Or you give, you tell them a secret, and a lot of times we tell, we say, "Yo, this is between me and you. This don't leave the room. Or oh, whatever, <laughs> whatever terms we use, this is between me and you. <laughs> fulfill our trust. So the command to fulfill the trust came in the Quran. Yeah, you have the amanu, la taqoon Allaha. And so did an Surah Al-Anfal, ayah number 27. Oh, you who believe, don't be, don't be treacherous in your trust to Allah the Messenger. The fourth thing, which is not mentioned in this narration, but in another narration, إِذَا عَاهَدَ غَدَ Agreements. Commitments, contracts. An agreement that may be between a person and he says here, Wali al Amr, those who have an agreement with the, the rulers in those countries. Or you have an agreement or commitment with the people. That we make, commit, make commitments with people. A sign from the signs of hypocrisy is that a person makes a commitment with somebody. They agree to something and then they don't carry out the agreement. They don't carry out their part of the agreement. And it's obligatory to carry out uh, the agreements that you agree to. Qala ta'ala wa ufu bi ahadillah idha a'adahtum idha a'adahtum sorry the importance show the importance of carrying out these and these are things that we do on a daily basis we agree to stuff we make contracts with people uh, people who trust us with secrets we promise people stuff and you know this is everyday stuff this is not like stuff that we're not going through these are everyday things that we have to be uh, conscious of. Tayyip. He says, فَيَجِبُ عَلَى الْمُسْلَمْ أَنْ يَفِيَ بِالْأَهْدِ بِالْعَهْدِ إِذَا عَاهَدَى That it's obligatory on the Muslim to carry out, carry out huh, their commitments that they commit to, their agreements, 
في عهده حتى ولو مع الكافر and that we don't break our agreements as he says even if it's with a non-muslim because a person is not they base even if they're non-muslim they'll base the religion on something that a muslim does so even if it's with a non-muslim that the agreements in your word we should hold our word we should uphold our word we should uphold our word as he says وَلَا يَجُوزُ أَلَغَدْرُ بِالْعُهُودِ مَعَ الْكُفَّارِ فَكَيْفَ مَعَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ it's not permissible to break your word just because they're not a, a person not a Muslim you made a commitment to somebody you agreed to something with a non-Muslim it's not permissible to break it just because they're not Muslim and if it's not permissible to break it with a non-Muslim then it's definitely not permissible to break it with a Muslim and these are these are small it's, these are small things that we deal with on a daily basis so it's obligatory to carry out, to carry out <clears throat> uh, our agreement and to keep our word, as you say. I say my word. Not. And those type of, that type of, uh, what do you call it? That type of principle, we might know it from the street, but it agrees. If Islam, if it agrees with the Sharia, it doesn't mean we have to throw it away. Islam encourages us to keep our word. And if we don't keep our word, then as the Prophet said, then it's from the signs of a hypocrite. He says, Al-Khamisu, he said the last sign, Ida Khasana Fajra. He says, Min alamat al-munafiq, ennahu yakdibu fil khusumat in al-hukkam. The sign of a hypocrite is that they lie when they go to debate or present their case in front of the judge. Hmm? Lying when it comes to debating. Debating in general, and he mentioned specifically. فَيَحْلِفُ كَاذِبًا Right? This is what I'm trying to do. So this way, I'm going to say this, and you say this, this way. Right? They bring a false witness in front of the judge. Right? It happens. He says, Why? لِأَجْلِ أَنْ يَكْسِبَ الْقَضِيَّةِ وَيَأْخُذَ أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ Possibly to get money. Right? They're trying to win a case. Case money. <laughs> it's real. Right? They might bring a person who wasn't there. Right? They bring false witnesses in front of the judge. They swear. They might take a bribe. Huh? If I win, this is an $80,000 case. I'll break you, you know. I'm going to look out. It's real. Yeah? Stuff is real. That they go in front of the judge, as a lot of times in the in the in the uh, the uh, the child support, the child support cases, Allah lied on. Sis came in there, she lied straight up, swore by Allah, right in front of the judge. I was standing there. Allah, lied on. <laughs> if that's the case, and people do that and lie, the Prophet said that that's from the signs of a hypocrite. So I slam on Even when we present our cases, we're truthful. That we're supposed to be truthful, even if we forget our case. And that we don't bring false witnesses. We don't bring a false witness. We don't lie. We don't swear by Allah and we're lying so that we can win the case. So that, as he says, فَيَكُنُوا صَادِقًا فِي خُصُومَتِهِ That even in the debates, even when we go to court, even when we go to court and the person on the other side is a Catholic, they're not Muslim. It doesn't mean we lie. Islam didn't allow that. Islam didn't allow us to oppress people because they're not Muslim. Islam didn't allow women to oppress men in the child support court because he's, you know, he ain't doing what he's supposed to do. Islam didn't allow the man to oppress the woman in the court because they had a fallout. All of those things fall under either khas or nafajr. That a person may come with something false in order to win the case. And at the end of the day, if they win that case, then they're taking. They may take something that they have no right to. They may take money that they're not entitled to take. They may eat the people's wealth and falsehood. They take something that is not, that they're not entitled to. He says, well, how they sifat? قبيحة يجب على المسلم أن يتجنبها 
It's obligatory for the Muslims to stay away from these things. And he says, and if a person continues, and it was back then, you remember Hajj Omar, you know them houses up in the mountains and all that? There's no address. So how do they know who lives in the house? Anybody take a guess? How do you know that this man owns this house? There's no address. They word. They don't have the deed. They word. They word. All they got is they word. That's all. That's it. So the sun comes. The sun that was supposed to be there was in Medina. So I'm assuming this was the other, the little brother. He sends the other. He sends his brother there to, to stand there for the case. So the judge asks him, where are your witnesses? Who do you have? Uh, how many kids do you have by the second wife? Uh, shaking. He said, tell you. He let him go out. Bring the other witness in. Ask him the same questions. I was sitting on the side just like that. Ask him the same questions. He said, you know his father? Yeah, his father's name. Is he married? Yeah. How many wives he had? One. He said, he had one now. Tell you. What's her name? This. Tell you. She had kids? Yeah. How many? Eight. What's the kids' names? Eight kids. What's their names? How many boys? This. How many girls? This. Tell you. Why? Because the only way we know if you own that property is based on the people you bring in here. The people you bring in here can solidify and say, yes, I'm a witness that his family lived in this house. It was eight of them that basically can attest to what you're saying. He said, why are you going to bring them down here? And they got to stand before a law, Yomo Kiana, for this witness that you got them in here doing. They got to stand before a law with this, they, they witness him for something. Right? You got them in here right now as your witnesses. Right? Yomo Kiyama, they got to stand before a law that they came in this courtroom and they bore witness to something that right now it don't even seem like they know what they're talking about. Don't put that on them. And I looked at their faces and both of them says, they were both shaking their heads like, yeah. And he told the guy, you know, get your witnesses and come back. And he ended the case like that just to show how serious we supposed to be. That's all we got. Really? And he told them, because they were all young, he told them, go back, get your witnesses, or whenever your brother comes back from Medina, have them bring the paperwork that you need. Inshallah, you got this amount of time to come back, and he left it like that. Just to show how serious it is when we go in front of a judge or a case or a debate that we truthful, that we truthful in what we present. And we'll stop there. Inshallah. Maybe next week we'll do one. Uh, uh, Maybe another class on edit before we start the next book. Any questions? Because often when you get to testify to anything, even if you're in front of a judge, really you're in front of the law. There you go. That's a big deal. Yeah.